Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're taking a look at another one of Kotobukiya's modeling support goods weapons. This is MSG number 37. This one is the Assault Rifle 2. If you take a look here, basically what we get included with this is a couple different options for that. You can have the shorter or the longer barrel type for that. You've got a couple extra clips and you've got some holding hands specifically made for this. Those are going to be working with your frame arms kits. Uh, so if you want to be holding this with different kits like a Gunpla or something, you can see how the way the design of this is with the handle and the clip, ammo clip right behind that. It's going to be maybe a little bit hard to use, so you might have to try to use these hands and modify those to work with your Gunpla kit. But we'll take a look at some different examples here. The list price for this one coming in at 600 yen for this set. And so you can see here's just some simple instructions for that. We've got a couple different options for that there. And so let's just go ahead and get it opened up, see what it looks like. Basically just got our two runners here, so let's take a look which ones first. They don't have any specific number there or like a letter A and B, so they're just labeled here with the MW37 there on the top. You can see there's our parts for the hands, some parts for the gun there. And then on the other runner, just the other parts for the gun, so it's going to be pretty simple. Basically just the two small runners in the same color gray here, so that's all you're going to have included. But let's get this put together and see how it looks with a few different examples, some uh, different frame arms, frame arms girl and gunpla examples, see how this looks. Alright, so here is how the Assault Rifle 2 is going to look straight out of the box. As you can see, all in one color here. Although it is all in one color, I think it does kind of suit the design. For a rifle design like this, I think if it was too multicolor, you know, it wouldn't really look quite right. So as far as just the color straight out of the box, I think it's okay. You are going to have a couple of seam lines there, but that's also pretty expected. That's also not very surprising. But I think the design, the details on it is very cool. It is going to be a very stylish looking gun. That said, I am a little bit concerned as to how well this is going to go with some different kits. Now as for the size of it, the size does look pretty compatible. Is that it might be that, that it's a little bit large for like the 144 scale Gunpla or like Frame Arms Girls. But it looks like it might be also be a little bit small for something larger like a Frame Arms kit or a 100 scale Gundam kit. So we'll try, try out some different combinations. Also concerned, again, still about that handle. And of course, if you guys are looking for a weapon like this or any of the others in the MSG line, you can check out the link down below in the video description to US at Gundam Store. See what we've got in stock there and you can save 10% off everything using the coupon code ZACHARILIUS10. So first off, we'll take a look here at the top, the camera at the top. So you have this optional part, but you could just remove that and just go without it. But then you'll have that hole in the top. We do also have an alternative camera here for the top. You have this style as well. If you prefer that one just has just a hole in there. It's not straight through all the way through. So you do have an actual piece like in the middle of there. So whichever option you end up going with with that, I think that ends up looking pretty cool. As for the barrel, this is the longer type. We also have a shorter type, so you can just remove that. And it's just a couple pieces when you plug that onto there. That's how it's going to look with the shorter type. Now this looks really good. And the one thing that I don't really like about this kit is that I wish it came with two of this in the box. So if you wanted to have two of these, if you wanted to dual wield these, because I think in the shorter form especially, it would look really cool dual wielding them. But you only have one in this kit, so that means you'll have to buy two of the, this kit to or to do that, unfortunately. You do have a third option though here, and that is to actually keep this shorter option on. And then you have this optional part here, which I guess looks a little bit more like a machine gun sort of attachment, I guess this is supposed to be, and that just fits over the top of there like that. So that will give you a little bit more length on that. It's also a pretty cool looking weapon. So again, I wish we had two of like the main body in here so that you could mix and match the parts a little bit more with having two of them for some dual wielding or if you wanted to have different attachments for the two of them. So Right off the bat, that's going to be my main complaint about these, but overall, the what different options we have so far are pretty nice. We do also have the optional uh, ammo clips here, which are just empty on the back side for just plugging onto somewhere in your kit. So if you wanted to have these just actually held in hand, you will have to do some modification or something to make that look right. Otherwise, just plugged onto a kit somewhere, they're going to look cool enough just as some extra ammunition. And then of course we have the option hands in here as well, which on their own look a bit goofy, but as you can see, this is kind of like the kind of hand that you're going to need in order to get around to get a good hold on this handle. You're going to need that wrist joint all the way out to the side in order to avoid this part, because this magazine is not removable there, that's just part of the molded body of the gun. So that's how it's going to look in the hand for a frame arms kit anyway, and I think you could probably modify this to be able to use this with a Gundam kit as well. Uh, but we'll take a look at that later. We just need to see if this is going to fit in the hand. We're going to start off with a frame arms girl kit though first. 
All right, so with the Frame Arms kit, I think it's gonna be working out pretty well, actually. It was, in this case, we have the Hesvelger bikini type, bikini version anyway. So this, for example, is one of the Frame Arms Girls kits that doesn't really come with a whole lot of stuff, so it might be one of the ones that you might wanna actually buy one of these extra weapon sets for, in this case. So well, I think the size fits pretty well with the Frame Arms Girl kit. As you guys may know, the Megami device kits are slightly smaller, so I think once you start using this with a Megami device kit, it might look a little bit large in comparison, but I think as far as matching this up with the Frame Arms Girl, it looks like the general size is gonna match pretty well. As far as holding the handle, uh, the Frame Arms Girls kit's hands are a slightly softer, slightly more rubbery material, so they're a little bit more flexible, and I think that's helping a little bit in terms of holding this, uh, because it's able to hold it in the hand there, and you're just barely able to kind of squeeze that wrist joint in there next to the magazine of the rifle, so you're just, while the hand is not really fitting on there super well, you're able to get it on there well enough so that it's able to hold it in some different poses, so I think it can work with the Frame Arms Girl, but let's try it with the Frame Arms Kit. So with the Frame Arms Kit here, with the use of that custom hand that comes included with this kit here of the rifle, it's going to be working very well. Obviously you're not going to have any trouble holding the kit because almost all Frame Arms Kits use the same hand. So if you were using something like, for example, the Baihu Kit, the White Tiger, or any of its different variants, they, that one uses a little bit different hands, in which case you wouldn't be able to use the included hands that come with this gun, so you'd have to work that out. But most of the Frame Arms kits are not going to have any trouble holding this, and as far as the size goes, it's also going to match up pretty well, I think, with most of them as well. The Baihu, also another example of a Frame Arms kit that's a little bit larger in general. It's a little bit taller than most. But the one thing that may not exactly match up is just the overall style. This gun, I think, has a very sort of realistic, modern-day sort of look to it, in a way, and it's very detailed. Uh, and then compared to something like this, where we have the Rapier kit, which is obviously a not very realistic design at all, and it doesn't have a ton of detail, it has some detail there around overall in general, but it's kind of the average amount of detail for a Frame Arms kit. So it might not match up entirely, but I think it works out pretty well. All right, and then for our 144 scale gun plug example here, I'm gonna be using the Granddaddy Gundam just because it's a standard design. And as you can see, it's not actually gonna be able to hold the rifle. I'm just faking it. It's just kind of holding the rifle underarm just so you guys can at least just see a size comparison. In order to get this to fit in the hand, like I said, uh, you will have to do a little modification to the handle. The handle is just a little bit too large to fit into the space uh, that you get with the hand of this HD kit. And so probably most HD kits are not going to be able to get a hand on this handle. What you'll have to do is to trim the handle down a little bit, just to make it a little bit smaller in order to fit into the hand of an HD gun. But you could, as you can see, the size actually looks workable. The size is a little bit large, but I think it looks it doesn't look necessarily too out of place. There's plenty of HD kits that have slightly larger guns. And so I think if you wanted to use this with an HD kit, the only problem is going to be just getting the hand at the wrist around the handle. Of course, you can make the handle smaller, but probably just going to be with the wrist so as long as you're able to do that or maybe for example you don't actually have the kit holding the rifle if you're just making it like a hanger display or something like that and you have the rifle just like on a rack in the hanger next to the Gundam or something like that could be something very believable but as far as the size goes I think it works so that's pretty good all right so finally here with just a 100 scale master grade kit with the sniper 2 as a replacement for the Sniper 2's bullpop rifle, I'm gonna say not, because while I think this rifle was actually fitting pretty well with the 144 scale kit, it's definitely looking a little bit small with your 100 scale kit. Now if you're using this with something like an F90, where it's like a much smaller design in 100 scale, then maybe, but with your standard 18 meter tall Gundam or mobile suit like this, with the Jim Sniper 2 being a pretty standard size mobile suit, and here in 100 scale, it's just going to be looking a bit small and underwhelming, so I'm going to say probably not going to be the best thing to use with a Master Grade kit. But that is going to be it for this rifle review, guys. Hopefully that was interesting, useful information for any of you who are interested in this weapon or looking for uh, this type of weapon. I think it's a pretty versatile gun in that it works pretty well with Frame Arms, Frame Arms Girls, 144 scale kits. It just looks like it's not really going to be the best option for anything too much larger than that. So. Let me know what you guys think about the rifle there down below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.